Ladies and gentlemen, it is really interesting and amazing to know how you can prepare your meals in an appetizing and pleasing manner. There's an old saying and a true one that what is pleasing to the eye is bound to be pleasing to the appetite. I'm going to demonstrate this step to you and I want you to watch it very closely. The first cutter that I'm going to show you now, this first one is known as the Parisian cutter. Wind it through the potato like a corkscrew. When the cutter appears on the opposite side, pull the cutter out. Place the handle in the center and twist it out. This is what they call a French curl. When you fry these, they come out like donuts, nice and brown. Serve them with your steaks or pot roast them. Unwind it, there's two curls out of the one potato. Tomorrow morning for breakfast, wind a little strip of bacon around the potato and serve them with bacon and eggs. They're delicious. Different colored vegetables, wind them together and you get the two colors. Here's a little trick cut. Split the curl halfway through the center. If you're making a shrimp salad and you happen to run short of shrimp, mix these in with the regular shrimp. Upon my word, you couldn't tell the difference until you start to eat them. Now the rest of the potato, you stuff it. We'll call this a little chicken. We'll call this here some hamburger. You might have a little meat that's been laying in the ice box for a few days. Chop the meat up fine, season it highly, stuff it into the center of the potato and bake them with the skins on. When they're done, cut them in two. Serve them on the half shell, just like that. Serve them in slices when company calls. The more company you have, the thinner you cut the slices. If your mother-in-law calls, give her a beak piece, like that. Now, the second tool in the set is known as the garnishing knife. Everything you cut with this must come out fancy. Watch this, please. You cut down, you turn the potato, and then you cut through the edge. First one way and then the other. Sweet potatoes cut like this. Drop them into a little batter of pancake flour and fry them. When they're golden brown, sprinkle molasses on them. Serve them with strips of bacon for breakfast while they're delicious. Here's beets, you pickle them, and carrots, you steam or cream them. In making the original French fried potato, cut them in thick slices. Put them one on top of each other, Cross-cut the slices and you'll never eat a French fry any other way. The potato cut like this will not absorb the fat because they're garnished around. Pineapples cut for your pineapple and cheese salad cut them the same way. Here is one and this is a dandy. Cuts any thickness or any size. Open it for a thick slice, close to the top for a thin slice. Saratoga chips you can make them for three or four pennies a pound. Just pull the blade towards you like this. If you want the slices thicker than this, open the blade, there's a thick slice. Shoe strings for your Friday fish dinner, cut them down like this. Chop them up for your vegetable soup. What this knife is really intended for is for cutting the cabbage. You know the old-fashioned board, how you rip and tear, sometimes nipping the ends off your fingers, lay it flat and pull it lightly towards you over the cabbage. The weight of the knife across the cabbage is all that's necessary. Why, ladies, when you get slaw cut as fine as this, you'll certainly appreciate eating it. The crowning feature of the set is the cutter that I'm going to show you now. This is known as the Champagne Vegetable Mincing Knife and Noodle Cutter. Now, when you want to make some real fine noodles at home, you roll the dough out like this. Dip this into a little flour so it doesn't stick to the dough, and as you roll it over the dough, that will cut the noodles in long strips ten at a time. Did you ever try to chop up the little nuts for cake? Why, well, I've seen ladies chop nuts and the nuts land up on the ceiling. Sometimes you chop the ends off your fingers. 
When you want to chop up a little nuts for cake, cooked meat, clams for chowder, soup greens to throw into your soup, making a little pepper or chicken hash is just a few strokes rolling it up and down. Why, here is without a doubt the meanest thing in the world to cut parsley. Put that in a grinder. You really grind it too fine. This machine, instead of crushing the parsley, cuts it quick, clean, and dry, leaving every bit of the juice and every bit of the flavor. Now, to clean this machine, you press the button. Rinse it out in a little water. When you're through using it, hang it up and let it dry. Here's one here that every lady should have in her home, known as the Parisian scoop. You lay it flat. Once to the right, once to the left. When you scoop them out, you'll get a perfect round little ball. You can pot roast these, cut them out of cheese or cut them out of butter. When you're serving a fruit cocktail in the summertime, take your fresh cantaloupe, scoop them out like this, mix them with apples, pears, and watermelons, makes a delicious fruit cocktail served with a little cracked ice like you see here. But here are the two ladies, if you ever do get it, you thank the day you've seen this demonstration. When you press, it locks. It's like a pair of human hands. Reach in the oven and take the biscuits out of the oven. Ever take the hot potatoes out of the oven and burn yourself on the elbow? A roast chicken out of the oven, a piece of meat out of the pot, spinach, asparagus out of the water, why around canning season when you're preserving the fruits, to take the hot fruit jars out of the water like that, that machine is worth dollars to you. And here's another one that I really know you'll enjoy having in your kitchen, known as the safety grater. No doubt you're familiar with the old-fashioned grater. I've seen ladies take a grater and rip the knuckles off. When you want to grate up potatoes for delicious potato pancakes, this has a smooth, flat edge, impossible to cut yourself. Just like you were washing clothes, you rub it up and down, and you really grate your vegetables real fine, retaining all the flavors and all the juices. Bread crumbs for your for when you're serving veal cutlets or anything like that. You want a little bread crumbs to fry your fish in? Well, there's the greatest proposition in the world. Use that for coconut, cheese, or horse ready. When you're through with it, just hit it down like that. That knocks all the food out. Rinse it out in a little water and hang it up and let it dry. Now, here is a stone made of carborundum and sapphire quartz which is made purposely to keep these knives sharp. When they get dull, a few strokes over the edge like this, and you can put a keen cutting edge on it. If you have a dull knife or a dull pair of scissors, an old sickle or a sigh, a lawnmower, cleaver, an axe, there's a tool that will really put an edge on the knife so the knife will really cut for you. I just want to give you an idea of how sharp that knife really is when you sharpen it with that stone. Ladies, I've seen some of you try to open up cans. Now, there's a can of Campbell's baked beans. I've seen ladies open up a can and you poke a hole in it, go round the top, hippity hop, and your finger slips. Let me show you a real proposition. Look, lay it on the can, lift up the safety, and turn the key. That locks itself on the can. No harder than you were winding up your watch. Wind up the key and that'll cut the top off of the can slick and smooth. Notice how the end raises itself up in the air so you can lift the lid off, giving you a clean, smooth edge. Now that can be used for sardine cans, square cans or round cans, exactly the same way. Now this tool here, my dear friends, needs no introduction. This will save you on an average of 20 to $30 every year you use it as a peeling knife. Here's a grater for cheese, coconut, or horseradish, a fish scaler for scaling your fish, and when you're coring your apple, it's just a slight twist of the wrist, and there's the apple core. There's one more tool that I want you to see, and I want you to watch this one very closely. Many a times when you're baking a pie, you have a pudding in the oven. I've seen ladies wrap a towel around your hand, and many a times you burn your fingers. Hook this onto the pot 
like this and lift the hot pots off the top of the stove. You've got a pie pan in the oven? Get your hold of the pie pan like this. Why, you couldn't get it off with a team of horses. This will positively lift 100 pounds. There's a pail of water weighs 50 or 60 pounds. That's the way you pick it up. But there's one more tool. I'll be all through and I'll be finished. Oh, now the next tool and the last one is what they call the Sarah Bernhardt Cutter. This was invented by the head chef of the Imperial Hotel in the city of Berlin, Germany. You place the screw into the center of the vegetable. Twist the vegetable until the threads catch a hold, then you wind this up. You keep winding until you utilize the whole potato. The faster you turn, the quicker the slices. Why, ladies, here's a machine for slicing onions. The first onion that you slice with this cutter, you bless the day, you've got a hold of it. Every slice cut exactly the same thickness. Every slice cut the same size. In making what they call a rosette, pull the vegetable out like this. Pin the ends together with a toothpick. Drop that potato into the hot fat and fry it. That will come out like a doughnut golden brown. If you're serving a nice fish dinner, a little parsley goes in the center with the fish all around it. Makes a very appetizing dish. Did you ever try to slice onions with a knife? You know how you get one thick slice and one thin slice? Run the knife through the center. That will separate each slice individual. Almost like magic, there is every slice cut exactly the same thickness and the same size. Wouldn't you like to have a set like this in your kitchen? Why, of course you would. Now, don't forget, Attend this theater every week and receive this 12-piece fascinating set absolutely free. Also, watch the newspapers and the theater lobby for further information. I thank you. Thank you.